Greetings fellow YouTube viewers. It's time for another compendium video. What is a wave? A wave is basically a bunch of particles moving backwards and forwards. So front and back, right and left, back and forth, either way. There's two kinds of waves, longitudinal waves and transverse waves. So in a longitudinal wave, the energy, that is the wave, is moving in one direction. <laughs> and the particles are moving back and forth parallel to that. So if the energy is moving in this direction, the particles are moving back and forward, backwards and forwards in this direction. In a transverse wave, uh, if the energy is moving in this direction, so from here to here, the particles are moving at 90 degrees, so up and down, up and down, up and down, like that. Light is a transverse wave whereas sound is a longitudinal wave. Now let's explore some of the properties of these waves. Reflection. Waves can be reflected by objects. Mirrors, for instance, reflect light, as you can see here. Now, mirrors are drawn like this. They're drawn by drawing a straight line and then a bunch of slopey lines. So it looks kind of like half of a Christmas tree. Uh, the slopey lines are the dull side and the shiny side is the straight line. Now, we have a light ray coming in. That's the incident ray. It's called the incident ray, represented by I. Then it, get, it hits the mirror surface, the shiny side, and then it gets reflected. So that ray that's reflected is called the reflected ray. I know, genius. Uh, so we imagine that there is an imaginary line going from the point where the ray was reflected and it's it's perpendicular to the surface of the mirror the shiny surface of the mirror and this is called the normal now normally this is called the normal <laughs> now the angle that the incident ray makes with the normal is called the is normally called the angle of incidence and the angle that the reflected ray makes with the normal is normally called the reflected ray. Now there's also reflection in sounds and that's basically echoes. If you've ever been hiking on a top of a mountain and then yelled really loud and heard reflections, uh, heard echoes, that's basically the sound getting reflected off. Now one thing that's really important is that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. But not, uh, not all mirrors, not all things that reflect light are mirrors. For instance, you might have had this experience if you've gone swimming, when you're at the pool and you look at the surface of water, sometimes you can't see what is underneath the water, especially if the water is close to your neck level and you're looking reasonably far away. What you see is something like this. The water sparkles, it shine, its surface shines like a mirror. But then when you go, so the reason for that is total internal reflection. When light comes at a very high angle to the normal, so as you can see here, the normal and the incident ray make a very high angle, uh, an angle of a great magnitude, not one that's stoned. Anyway, um, so when the angle has of great magnitude, of course, it's, it can't be greater than 90 degrees, but it's almost 90 degrees, you can see here. Then, instead of going into the water, the light gets reflected off the surface of the water, and then it comes into your eyes. But, you may be asking, what about if you're standing on top of a diving board, and you're looking down? Then that same water, you can see what's underneath that water, and the water doesn't act like a mirror. The reason for that is refraction. Now you see the angle that the incident ray makes with the normal is much smaller than the angle that it made when it was totally reflected. Totally, Stacy. Anyway, uh, so when light goes into, uh, changes between media, and if it passes into the second medium, then it changes direction. So there's the angle of instance, and there's also an angle of refraction. So the angle that the refracted ray makes with the normal is different and they're related by this formula sine of the incident angle is the is proportional to the sine 
of the, of the refracted angle. And the ratio between these two is a constant, which you will find out later, is called the, which you'll find out in uh, later classes, is called the refractive index. Now, lenses refract light as well. That's why they're made of glass or plastic or stuff like that. And as you can see here, they make they can make things look bigger, smaller. Sometimes they can turn things upside down. And even our uh, and a lot of things that we use for seeing have lenses. Cameras have lenses. Magnifying glasses have lenses. But most importantly, the human eye and most eyes have lenses. You might even be wearing contact lenses or uh, glasses. This is because the normal lenses um, in your eye are not working as they should. And so you need an extra lens to help it. But in a normal human eye, what happens is light shown by red, as you might have noticed. See, I'm a bit of a themester. So yeah, uh, comes in, light rays come in uh, through the eye. They come through what is called the cornea and then they hit the eye lens. And the eye lens focuses them onto the retina. The retina is basically like a screen and it has a whole bunch of cells that convert that uh, light into an electrical impulse, which helps you see. So this is how the human eye works. But what about for sound? What about the human ear? So the ear is far more than what we actually see. What we see uh, is the, and often get piercings on and stuff like that, is just the outer ear. And you might have noticed in the olden days, people used to have who had hearing difficulties used to have um, these massive, ridiculous looking things called ear trumpets. They were really funny. Uh, and basically, the outer ear has the same function as these ear trumpets. It just focuses the sound into the ear canal. Once the sound goes into the ear canal, it meets the eardrum, the eardrum is like a drum. It's it has a membrane. I know mind equals blow. The eardrum is like a drum. Yeah. Um, and after that, the vibration. So uh, there's shaking going on. Um, the eardrum shakes because the air is vibrating from the sound waves. And so this shaking shakes bones uh, inside the ear. These are the smallest bones. Like if you've ever had fish and had those annoying bones sticking in your mouth, these are even smaller. These are the smallest bones in the human body uh, that are found in the inside ear. And basically, they act like maracas uh, passing on a signal. So they shake, one shakes, and then the other shakes, and then the other shakes, and then so on and so forth, until they transmit the signal. And eventually, the shaking reaches the cochlea. And this is like a snail. And in Latin, cochlea means snail, just so you know. Bit of trivia for you. Uh, and basically there's um, a bunch of sensing cells here which convert that shaking sound into electricity notice the theme uh, and then they said there's a nerve that sends that electricity to the brain so that you can hear sound like my lovely voice so if you like or enjoy hearing my sound and hearing my content and looking at what I am presenting with your eyes, then please consider subscribing to Compendium. Thank you.